Welcome to the Donghead Crew. Today we have an NL Duck Profile. This is the build that I'm going to be running. I'm going to go through all of the cards and at the same time I will explain how to play the deck and why specific cards are in the deck and I'll show you a few combos. So first of all we're going to start with our searcher. That's going to be for Shuras. Some people play the Big Mom package. I prefer this package at this point simply because it's better in the mid range. It's a little bit better against Sakazuki. So I'm playing four Shuras as the searcher. And the main combo of the deck would be the four Holies and the four Alms. Basically, what these two do is this becomes a 6k when you have two life. And on play, it searches the top five cards. If you find a Holy, you can add it to your hand. After that, if you don't find the holy with the ohm, but you have the holy in your hand, because you could have found it with Shura previously on your two down turn, you can still play the holy, even though if you don't find it. So basically you get a 6k and a 5k body on the field, because usually you take the first two hits to get to two life, meaning they go first, you go second, you search with the Shura, <clears throat> you get uh, one of these, most likely you will find an own first because it can find a holy and then they attack your three dawn you take the life and you play this on four dawn basically getting an own and a holy they attack you again and you're a two life at that point right and that's when it becomes a 6k and this one becomes a 5k basically because you always want to take the first two hits to your life when you're playing as an NL player. And usually you don't even attack their life simply because of this new card that we have called Gidatsu. Gidatsu on play KOs one of your opponent characters with a cost equal or less than the number of your opponent life cards. Meaning that's why we usually don't swing with NL at first because of this card. But the reason I'm running only three of these, not four, because uh, there's a lot of good leaders that are four life or three life. Red, purple, Luffy is a three life, and uh, the Sakazuki is at four life. So sometimes it's not that good, but <clears throat> it's a good pop when you manage to do it. People will tend to play around this card, knowing that you're a yellow player, especially if you don't attack them with the NL at the start of the game. They will think you'll have a Gidatsu. So. 3 is more than enough, simply because if you're going first, it's a good curve for you to play on. <coughs> so I'm running 3 of these. The next card I really like in the NL is uh, 4 Crackers. Uh, the reason I like Crackers is, uh, first of all, you're taking the first 2 hits. So if it's a Cracker in life, uh, you're doing very well, because then you have a double attack for 1 dawn. That's 7k. Most of the time, like I said, you're taking your life early on, so most of the time it's going to be life. It's a good trigger, it's a double attack, it's 7k with one down. It's uh, very good in NL. You should be trying to at least stack four of these. Next on we have the big bodies. I have two seven cost limits. Some run three of these, some run four. I prefer two. Simply because in the late game it becomes uh, quite weak, especially if they don't have any life and you play it, they can just choose to trash their own life, which they don't have, and it loses its value. So 2 is more than enough to play in curve, because the other 2 7 costs I play are 2 NL. NL is kind of busted in the Sakazuki matchup, because when you play it, it has protection. If they don't have a Luffy on the field, you can basically trash one of your life and it stays alive. Even if they bounce it, even if they KO it, it doesn't matter. If it leaves the field by any means whatsoever, you can use the effect and simply keep it alive. It's a rush unit and it's a 7k body. If they try to deal with it, it's gonna cost them a lot of cards. So, 2 is more than enough. We don't wanna break too much in the deck because the other boss monsters that are run at 4 is 4 Katakuris. This card is just too good. It can replenish your life if you're below one life. <clears throat> you go down to zero and you can't use the ability of your lead. You can just bounce a card with uh, Katakuri. If there is a problem on the field, you can bounce it with Katakuri. 
It's just too busted of a card not to run a four in this deck. That's the reason I'm running four categories. <laughs> and the MVP, the best card in the deck, is nine Yamatos. Yamato not only pops a card on the field, but it gets you a life when you're at one life or zero life, which is uh, where you most of the time are gonna be. Because sometimes they might go greedy and just take out the last life so you cannot replenish it later on, not be able to use the lead effect. So this card makes it happen that either at zero life you get uh, one life back, so you can use the effect again on the next turn, or you get a second life and just chill and it's gonna be very hard to take you out because Nell is uh, hard to take out. He's a lead that can uh, be very, very strong in regards of late games because it's kind of hard to take him out. <laughs> he's, he's a very good card, especially since you can just uh, discard a brick and just get a new card. It can be a trigger. And speaking of triggers, we have four brulees, which is... Uh, one of the best triggers in the deck, simply because it has no cost to play it. When it's triggered, it becomes a blocker, which means if they try to take you out and finish you out, <clears throat> you can get a blocker like this and stay alive. And they already overextended, so you can punish them for that. And on top of this, you have the four beiges, which also pretty much do the same thing. They don't allow you, your opponent to attack, so they're trying to finish you off, which is really hard to finish off an NL. You can simply trigger this, so at least 8 cards, which is 20, about, no, it's less than 20% of your deck, can simply not let them finish you off uh, when they're trying to do so. Uh, for the 2Ks, I play Satori, Beige is also a 2K, but this is one of the new cards we got just now. Worst case, you can just trash a card and play it on the field, have an extra body to finish them off. So this is a very good card we just got in the OPO5 set. Two extra 2Ks just to have the <clears throat> the 10, at least 10 2Ks in your deck. The amount of 10 2Ks is like a mid-range, usually people run 12, but uh, since in this deck you're quite hard to take out uh, and you don't want to have too many 2Ks in your hand, you want to have the Yamatos, the categories and so on, so this is a good option instead of having like 8 because 8 is not enough, 2 is more than enough but on top of that we also have 2 L Tors you don't want to run too many of these because it's only good in the late game it's searchable, it's a Sky Island card same as uh, with Colonies, it's also a Sky Island card that you can search but basically this is a radical beam when your opponent is at 2 life or less, which most of the time they will be in the late game. This one becomes a 4k counter card for just one done. So, do you want to guess what the last 3 cards are? Last 3 cards are Thunderbolts. 3 Thunderbolts. Uh, the reason I don't run more than that, I think 3 isn't enough, simply because there's not enough space uh, to put more. But at this point, uh, like usually if you have it in hand, it's a brick, you don't want to have it. But in this deck, you want to lower your life. Even early on, you can play this just to lower your life. And it is also, well, you can also discard it for the null effect. So if you can a brick, uh, you could simply discard this card. It's not a problem. If it's a trigger, you can take out one of their blockers and punish them for overextending and trying to finish you off. So it's a very good trigger card in this deck. And basically what you want to do is, like I said, uh, you want to go second, play this. After that, on your four dawn, you play this and this. On your six dawn, you're going to play Gudatsu. Swing for five, swing for five, swing for seven. On the next turn, you have your Katakuri that's live. You're gonna play your Katakuri, and in the later rounds you play Yamato. Basically this is the curve that you want to have going second, playing into these cards. If you're going first, it's a bit tricky going first with this deck, but it's possible. If you're going first, most likely you're not gonna Shura. Shura is also a trigger, you can get it out of life, so... And you can bounce it back with Katakuri to get the life and use it again. 
If you're going first, usually the curve is a bit different. You're gonna play a Holy or a Shura on your first turn. On your second turn, you might go Om Holy or you might go Hidatsu. Go as you're at 5 down. At 1 down, you don't play anything. At 3 down, you play one of these. At 5 down, you play either the Holy Om combo or Gidatsu. At 7 down, you play your 7 cost Mom or your NL. And at 9 down, you play either a Katakuri or a Yamato. Since, uh, like I said, at first you're gonna be taking all the hits until you're at 2 life at least. <laughs> so you just take the first two hits always and that's why these cards come in clutch because uh, this one they don't want to give you a life they will just trash a life this one if, if they go too aggressive you can get a life or take out one of their cards this one you can get a life if you're at one life or pop a card if you, they were not as aggressive and you just uh, get a big body and pop a card and basically those are the curves that you have with this deck going first and second and the point is simply to, like I said, take the first two hits, go low on life, and just play the yellow game.